Senator Simidian, tell me why do Californians need a green chemistry initiative? I think we're long since the time when we should be taking it for granted that whatever the products are we use in our daily lives, that they're safe, that they're sensible, that we can count on someone, some unknown someone, to have taken the time and to provide the expertise to make sure the products we use in our daily lives are safe for us. It's time to take a big step back and ask ourselves, how, do we, how are we doing business? Is there a better way? Are there other options? Are the products we use in our daily lives safe? Are the products available to our businesses safe? How do we know? Where is that information to be found? Is anyone really providing the kind of oversight and guidance that's necessary? All of those are big questions, but they're questions that we can begin to answer uh, with a combination of the two bills that the governor's just signed and that Assemblymember Mike Fuhrer and I have authored. Well, this bill came about in part because for the past couple years I've been riveted on the connection between toxics, cancer, and other serious illnesses. There was a report issued last year by some of the world's leading scientists that said that kids in the womb are pre-programmed to get diseases like cancer and diabetes and you can never unprogram them, they posited, because the moms are exposed to toxics in everyday life. So for me, this is a real call to action for all of us to recognize that we need to be making sure that public health is protected, and yet we have consumer products that contain chemicals that often are dangerous to us. So this legislation is the most comprehensive in the country in breaking this link. It gives state scientists for the first time the authority to determine what chemicals are dangerous, evaluate what alternatives might exist to the use of those chemicals in products we use every day, and then take action, meaningful action, from labeling to banning products that contain chemicals that our scientists say aren't helpful for our kids. So tell me specifically about the bill that you authored. What exactly will it do? Well, I authored Senate Bill 509, which provides for a clearinghouse on hazardous chemicals here in California. And I think it may appear to be the sleepy uh, part of the bill package, but uh, I'm excited about it. It's um, knowledge is power. We can't make sensible determinations about what we do, uh, what kind of regulations are in place, what kind of limits are appropriate until we know what we're dealing with. Um, how much, where is it used, what are its qualities. Um, I think that the public's right to know, as well as the need for information that both business and government have, um, is the necessary precondition to successful action on the green chemistry front and I'm very, very pleased that we're in a place now where we can begin to pull that information together. Once we have more information, what, what are going to be some of the challenges with regulating some well, of these chemicals? Yeah, We're going to have major challenges when it comes to assuring we have the resources we need to conduct this science-based evaluation. You know, many of my colleagues have been saying for a long time they're not comfortable opining on what is a dangerous chemical that ought to be banned and what's safe because they aren't scientists. So we are giving to the scientists this authority. We need to give them the resources they need to conduct that evaluation. In budget times like these, that's going to be a real challenge. We also need to be sure that this regulatory process that's being established isn't a recipe for merely bogging the state down in months, if not years, of evaluative processes when there's a real need for action soon. So the balance between assuring we are doing science-based regulation and doing it with some urgency where necessary is going to be difficult to strike, but I think it, pos it is possible to do so. Uh, there is much about this legislation that's likely to be replicated around the country. I'm hopeful that in California we can show that it is the best way to break this link between dangerous diseases and chemicals to which we're exposed every day. So the two organizations co-hosting this event, Environmental Defense Fund and the California League of Conservation Voters, what would you say to their membership or the folks involved with these organizations? How can we be effective at putting pressure on folks to do the right thing here? I, I think the message I would send is this is just the beginning. You know, ordinarily when we have a bill signing and a ceremony, uh, we all pat ourselves on the back and say, job well done, and uh, walk away. Uh, in this case, it's anything but. This is the start of what promises to be a long and challenging effort. Um, I would say now is the time for people to roll up their sleeves. There is a process in place. There is a vehicle for providing this kind of information. Uh, my message to your members is to say, keep the state accountable, not only at the legislative level, but the administrative level as well. Um, the work's really just begun. What can groups like the California League of Conservation Voters, which has a strong membership of 30,000 members, how can we most effectively be involved 
in making some of these changes happen and, and holding folks accountable. Well, first, I want to say to CLCB's membership how integral CLCB has been to creating this legislation in the first place. Week in, week out, for the course of the last couple of years, I've been working closely with CLCV experts and advocates in Sacramento who were absolutely integral to the passage of this legislation. And I'm very proud of our relationship together. Now, with the passage of a bill that creates a new regulatory process, it's important for CLCV members to put appropriate pressure on government regulators to act with expertise and quickly. It's important that future legislation to expand on what we've done happens as well. And I think it's essential that CLCV members put the, the members of the legislature with whom they have relationships to the test of not only resting on laurels that have been established so far, but building on this success, refining it, making it more specific, and assuring that we don't just have a good press conference today, but important action tomorrow.